Hi guys, it is turning into a fine late spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on where are we? Friday, June 4th, 2021 and I have got to start preparing for my interview with biologist Gerardo Ceballos here in a few hours. I got to do my homework but before I do my homework. I'm going to do what I do every Friday, and uh, that is check in with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at Manga Bay for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. And uh, you know, I've been doing this rant, good lord, in various places on YouTube for going on ten years. I want to, I want to find the very first one of these Manga Bay roundups uh, from about 10 years ago. Listen to it and compare it to this one. It is, uh, you know, this weekly laundry list of assaults against this planet. Uh, starting to sound a little bit redundant, but uh, that's, that's kind of the point, is that nothing has changed. There has been zero improvement uh, over the years of anything. It has gotten worse and worse and worse, week after week, month after month, year after year. The uh, drip, drip, drip of humans attacking this planet. It, this is the best record of planet eating on, on record anywhere is this weekly uh, updates uh, from Manga Bay. Now, of course, I think it's Bozo Nero has uh, moved it to a new level. Anyway, uh, there's a lot on here, and I got a lot on my plate today, so I'm not going to get very deep into any of these. Gee, where have we heard this one <clears throat> before? Threat of legal action against indigenous Borneans protesting timber company. Yes, for more than a year, indigenous communities in Borneo have been campaigning against a timber conglomerate. Uh, they allege the company failed to obtain consent, blah, blah, blah. Uh, talking about its BS certified sustainable timber production plantations. Yes. Uh, so now, of course, you know, one of the one of the main tricks in the book from these giant corporations is just suing the uh, the people protesting them. Anyway, I think we've heard that one before. Alright, what is going on with soil? With good old the soil beneath our feet. Billions of years ago, the first soils served as a cradle for terrestrial life. Today, the land beneath our feet underpins a multi billion dollar global agricultural industry and provides food for nearly 8 billion humans along with countless wild and domestic species, but soils are in a global crisis. We are now living in the danger zone for four of the nine planetary boundaries. Climate change, biodiversity, land use change, and biogeochemical flows all four of these planetary boundaries are intimately linked to soil health. Yes, deteriorating soil health is already gravely impacting lives and livelihoods. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Anyway, guys. Oh... Uh, here is a look asking the question, can 
Joe Biden's 30 by 30 plan put U.S. on a positive conservation track. You know, claiming Joe Biden claiming that we are going to protect 30% of the U.S. by the year 2030. <clears throat> we shall see. Um, I'm moving on from that. All right. <clears throat> As I was reporting on Manga Bay, uh, how many years ago? 12 years ago, I was uh, running, having the story myself on Manga Bay. In Peru, officials play a losing game of whack a mole with illegal miners. Yes, a crackdown in 2019 on illegal mining in Peru's La Pampa area has displaced the disruptive activity to the region around the Paramano River, where deforestation rates are accelerating. Yes, since 2017, um, you know, where they're mining, uh, and this is a huge understatement, has lost over 500 acres of forest to illegal mines, one and a half times the size of London's Hyde Park. Uh, and now the monthly deforestation rate has nearly doubled uh, from the previous two years. Uh, and I'm not going to get into this, you know, talking about the indigenous communities near the mines uh, have reported water pollution and an increase in violent crime in illegal cantinas and bordellos in the area. This is, I, I talk about this in my book, uh, <clears throat> Peruvian Plunge, where I was actually on a bus full of prostitutes heading to uh, these uh, gold mines in Peru, where every weekend the the prostitutes pack into the buses and head out to these. I, I, I tell you guys. I, I, anyway, same old story. Nothing changes. All right. Well, speaking of Bozo Nero, let's go over there to Brazil. Wow. Land conflicts in Brazil break record under Bozo Nero. <clears throat> Land conflicts in Brazil broke a record in 2020 for the second year running, reaching 1,576 cases of land conflicts. Activists have identified government actions hmm, as the main driver for the increase in conflicts over land, labor, and water citing cuts to environmental and social initiatives and rhetoric <clears throat> coming out of the mouth of Bozo Nero favoring land grabbers and illegal miners. Conflicts involving indigenous peoples accounted for more than 40% of that total. Uh, eight Officially, 18 victims of murders were linked to land conflicts in Brazil last year. There's a hell of a lot more than 18 people have been gunned down. Uh, attacks on indigenous reserves have escalated in recent weeks. Yeah, uh, we'll get back to this later. <clears throat> From Brazil to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I love that word, democratic. Wow. Deforestation intensifies in northern DRC protected areas. I'm going to be talking with Gerardo about this whole hilarious concept of protected areas. He is a huge proponent of protected areas. 
and I want to see what uh, his opinion is. All right, let's go over to a Congolese protected area. <clears throat> Satellite data are showing recent spikes in deforestation activity in the northern portion of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Forest loss appears to be affecting protected areas including the Okapi Wildlife Reserve and Bile Urere. Major drivers of deforestation in the DRC include logging, charcoal production, agriculture, and informal mining, which sources say are aided by government in action. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, what is going on with peatlands in Southeast Asia. What do you think is going on with peatlands in Southeast Asia? It's the same damn thing that's going on with uh, rainforest in the Congo. Hmm, this is real rocket science, guys. In Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia and Malaysia, peatlands have been extensively drained and cleared using fire for agricultural purposes. Yes, insufficient law enforcement, lack of interagency coordination, relatively weak governance, and poor institutional capacity for forest and peatland management have been barriers to, you know, saving the peatlands. You can kiss goodbye the peatlands in Indonesia. Ah, okay. <clears throat> what is going over there in uh, Yemen? We've been talking about this uh, <clears throat> crumbling Yemeni tanker threatening a massive oil spill. The FSO Safer, you gotta love it. The, the name of the, the ship is the Safer. Yes, the Safer. <coughs> An oil super tanker anchored for decades off of Yemen risks a catastrophic environmental and humanitarian disaster in the Red Sea. As the civil war in Yemen is suspended, essential maintenance on the increasingly fragile vessel with more than one million barrels of oil still inside its hold. Yes, uh, on June 1st, uh, talks broke down between the UN and the Yemeni government which controls the vessels. Do you think so? A spill, which this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When this thing finally breaks apart, it will jeopardize cor corals with the best known chance of surviving climate change. Yes. Okay. Now then they go over to the Mongolian steppes. Uh, to see how they're screwed. All right. Wow. Let's go back to Borneo. Gee, how many times have we heard this headline? Mining linked yet again to another severe flood in Indonesian Borneo. Recent floods that hit the eastern part of Indonesian Borneo may have been exacerbated by massive deforestation for coal mines. There are as many as 94 coal mines in the Baral district, which was hit by floodwaters as high as two meters. Uh, illegal mine. That, that's talking the legal 
94 coal mines, and don't forget the illegal mining is also rampant in the area. Uh, all right, a chocolate giant is here to save the planet. Uh, yes, chocolate giant funds high resolution carbon map to protect forest. Yes, Sancho Panza, aren't you funding a resolution to protect chipmunks? Yes, we have a fox funding a resolution to uh, guard the hen house. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Area impacted by land use change, can you say humans, four times higher than previously thought. This is the higher than previously thought uh, story of the Wig and Manga Bay. A new study has found that global land use changes due to human impacts are four times greater than previously thought. The study found that humans have generated changes to 43 million square kilometers, otherwise known as 17 million square miles of land, which is about a third of the global land services between 1960 and 2019. So basically, in my lifetime, uh, humans, uh, you know, as the population of the planet has pretty much tripled since I was born in late 1959, humans in my lifetime have pretty much, uh, you know, obliterated 17 million square miles uh, off of this planet. Yes. Okay, we were just talking about this, you know, impending environmental disaster in the Red Sea and even the mainstream media covering this story. Where is this in Sri Lanka, this uh, chemical cargo ship uh, portending? You can look forward to a major environmental catastrophe uh, unfolding for next week. We'll hear the, the, the next part of this story. This one is looking at the plastic pellet catastrophe from the stricken ship. <clears throat> Sri Lanka faces an uphill task to clean up countless plastic pellets that have washed up on its beaches from a cargo ship that caught fire off the island's west coast. Uh, the plastic pellets, otherwise known as nurdles, that fell overboard during the incident have spread with ocean currents down to southern Sri Lanka, carpeting beaches along the coast and posing a threat to marine life and humans. Uh, experts say the cleanup operation will be long and difficult given the scale of the problem and the fact that Sri Lanka is still under a corona panic lockdown that limits the mass mobilization needed to mount a cleanup effort. You know, that uh, I guess that nobody trying, you can't have people closer than six feet to each other cleaning up plastic pellets off the beach. You can have one person, I guess, every six feet. But I'm not going to get in a bad hair day rant. All right, what's going on with orangutans this week? Lean times leave orangutans wasting away and habitat loss makes things worse. 
Bornean orangutans experience muscle loss when fruit is scarce as the fat reserves they build up are not enough to meet their needs, a new study has found. Uh, the findings highlight that any further disruption of their fruit supply, including habitat loss and climate change, could have dire consequences for orangutan health and survival. Yes. What is going on during the International Year of Caves? Take a wild guess what is going on in the International Year of Caves. Caves are screwed. We're going to look at some caves in Brazil. Yes. Uh, 2021 has been designated the International Year of Caves. Um, in the case of Brazil, this is an opportunity to alert society to the increasing risks being experienced by Brazilian caves and every other cave. All right. We're going to have a book review from Planet Palm. We have a new book about the palm oil taking down the planet. Planet Palm reveals a world stained by red oil. Yes, from the Niger Delta to modern day Indonesia and Honduras, Planet Palm weaves a nuanced and gripping narrative out of the history of palm oil. Uh, the book meticulously covers the colonial beginnings of the industrial palm oil trade and the fortunes made from its popularity. A battle rages over the ecological and labor rights track record of the palm oil industry. Yes, Planet Palm is an excellent and readable overview of one of the biggest issues in environmentalism. And Ben, uh, if you're listening to this roundup, it would be nice if they had given us the uh, author of this, but we need to get the author of Planet Palm onto the show. So let's send out an invitation. All right. Let's go down to the Peruvian Amazon, you know, where I've spent some time myself looking at declining fish biodiversity in the Peruvian Amazon affecting human uh, nutrition. Yes, uh, talking about how fishermen have been catching fewer large migratory fish species. Do you think so? Uh, inland communities are already transitioning toward eating more farmed fish and chicken uh, because there's no longer any wild fish to eat. Uh, and then it goes into the larger bush meat, you know. Good Lord. Okay. So what is, this is the latest story on this. Uh, illegal miners fire shots and burn homes inside the Mundaruco Indigenous Reserve. This is in Brazil again. Illegal gold miners set fire to homes of several indigenous leaders in the Mundaruco Indigenous Reserve in the Brazilian Amazon this week. Uh, do you think so? <clears throat> indigenous groups say the latest attack was in retaliation to police operations aimed at expelling illegal gold miners from the Mundaruco Reserve, which is supposed to be under federal protection and, of course, uh, I'm taking that sentence 
with a, uh, a grain of salt. The Mundaruko people have been battling invasions for decades, but miners have grown bolder amid expectations that the federal government <clears throat> may soon legalize wildlife, wildcat mining on indigenous lands. Uh, police forces withdrew from the region following the attacks. Do you think so? Leaving indigenous people, further, people vulnerable to further violence. The latest attacks in the Mundaruka Reserve follow a wave of violence in the Yanomami Reserve, where 1,730 acres have been degraded since January alone, setting the stage for a new record for deforestation inside the reserve. Uh, did you know that oil palm plantations are a threat to global health? Hmm. From Ebola in Africa to malaria in Brazil to tick-borne illnesses in the U.S., there is a common thread linking outbreaks of vector-borne and zoonotic diseases fluctuating forest cover. Yes, deforestation can fuel the rise of diseases. Citing the link between oil palm plantations and outbreaks of malaria and dengue. Uh, anyway, let's go down to Paraguay. Drugs, fire, and settlers are poised to wipe out one of Paraguay's most biodiverse forests. This is the San Rafael National Park, and the proposed National Reserve encompass one of the most unique biodiverse and threatened forests in Paraguay. Fires late last year burned an estimated 45% of the reserve. Meanwhile, drug traffickers are expanding illegal marijuana plantations. Uh, <clears throat> and on May 21st, more than a hundred outsiders reportedly crossed into the protected area where they are now clearing trees and establishing settlements. Yes. Moving along, uh, gee, how many times uh, have we heard this? Just, uh, did this uh, beating a dead horse from, we're going to do two more dead horse beatings, and then I have to uh, get to work preparing for my interview. Here is Brazil's Zingu River Basin feeling the heat from Bozo Nero's fiery rhetoric. An area six times larger than New York City has been destroyed by loggers, land grabbers, and illegal miners from 2018 to 2020 in the basin along the Zingo River. Uh, a green corridor of reserves and conservation units risks being severed in two with land grabbers advancing on both sides from municipalities with high levels of deforestation. Experts say the dramatic increase of destruction reflects a generalized sense of impunity in the region fueled by the anti-indigenous and anti-environmental rhetoric of President Jair Bozo Nero. Uh, suspension of environmental inspections 
you, you know, using the corona panic as a cover story, suspension of environmental inspections uh, led to a notable uptick in the defar deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. Meanwhile, the number of fines imposed for environmental crimes fell by 34%. And we're going to wrap up with the, how many times have we heard this story? Now we're, we're going to move from the Zingu River to the Tapajos River to wind up this broken record. New clearing of forest in protected area in Brazil linked to mining. <clears throat> An expansive clearing of primary forest has been detected in the Tapajos Environmental Protection Area in the Brazilian Amazon, possibly driven by illegal mining. Uh, satellite imagery confirms that the, the deforestation, which covers over 3,000 acres, uh, occurred between January and February of this year. Mining activity is the suspected driver of this particular forest loss as the cleared area surrounds a long-standing feature resembling an airstrip. Meanwhile, several bills are pending in both of Brazil's Houses of Congress that would, meaning will, create loopholes for more mining on indigenous territories and grant amnesties to land grabbers. Anyway, guys, I think we get it, and uh, if you don't get it yet, we're going to have Gerardo Ceballos explain to us uh, what is going on on this planet. And, uh, anyway, get out there and grab all the land you can while you still can. You need to grab some chipmunks. Bye, guys.